the Federal Board of Revenue has held back over 400 billion rupees in tax refunds to reduce the volume of shortfall in annual revenue collection in the outgoing fiscal year 2023. The FBR's decision to withhold tax refunds has sparked significant concerns and drawn a strong reaction from the International Monetary Fund. In response to the situation, the IMF has proposed implementing a ceiling on the net accumulation of tax refund arrears in both income tax and sales tax. According to a senior tax official, the IMF officials have allowed some leeway to exceed the ceiling during September and December. These months are crucial as individuals and corporations file their returns with the FBR and claim their refunds. The U.S. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asia, Elizabeth Host, has said that there's no quick fix to Pakistan's economic problems, but following the arrangement it has made with the IMF can help it overcome the crisis. She assured Pakistanis that the United States and Pakistan have an enduring partnership which would not be affected by the current political situation. She also said that the United States was encouraged by the current Pakistani government's promise to hold elections soon, but it has no favorites in the country. Ms. Host added that the United States and Pakistan had a bilateral trade of $9 billion in 2022, which makes the United States Pakistan's biggest trading partner. She also shared some statistics showing that U.S. companies invested about $250 million in Pakistan in 2022 and 120,000 Pakistanis are employed by U.S. companies and the U.S. provided $250 million in flood assistance in 2022. This does not include the $33 million sent by Pakistani Americans. Ms. Host said that the U.S. has provided over $20 billion to Pakistan in the last 20 years. On Saturday, the Punjab caretaker cabinet approved a 35% increase in the salary of government officials employed in grades 1 to 16, as well as a 30% hike in salaries of grade 17 to 22 employees. The cabinet meeting, chaired by Kedika Chief Minister Mohsin Nakhvi, also approved a 17.5% hike in pensions. The increase in salaries, however, will be made on the current basic salary of the government servants. Amid an increase in the price of sugar, Chief Minister Mohsin Nakhvi also directed lasting measures to curb sugar smuggling and to bring stability to the prices of the commodity. A principal approval was also granted for the purchase of two new helicopters for rescue 1122. One helicopter would be used as an air ambulance while the other would be used for rescue operations during flood or in any untoward situation. The cabinet also approved 4.4 billion rupees for the irrigation department to meet essential expenditures during floods and a special ministerial committee has been constituted in this regard. The committee will grant its approval after making a quick decision. The Federal Cabinet has approved the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority's request to increase the national average tariff, which will see some residential consumers paying up to 7.5 rupees more per unit. The Cabinet approved the hike through a summary on Friday and the decision was conveyed to the power regulator on Saturday. NEPRA has now set a public hearing for Monday to fulfill the formalities before implementing the hike, which will retrospectively take effect from 1st July and will apply to all power distribution companies and the Karachi-based private utility Key Electric. Almost 100% of EasyJet's cabin staff in Portugal walked out for five days on Friday and the union threatens with more strikes in the coming months if the company keeps rejecting the raises they demand. EasyJet's cabin staff in Portugal a popular European summer holiday destination called a strike from 21st July to 25th July, the third so far this year, as the conflict with the company's management over wage hikes to offset the soaring cost of living crisis.